Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with David Manning. Need music and everything, David. So I'm really excited to have David on the podcast today. And Dave, it's actually David and uh, we have like kind of been around in, in similar circles, kind of connected. Uh, I know you will send me wonderful, wonderfully kind emails. Uh, and I just said, hey, you should come on my podcast. I'd love to talk to you about your, you know, you've been in education uh, for a little while. I won't say how long, right? Because you look, uh, you do look a lot younger. Yeah, when you told me your age, I'm like, seriously? So, uh, so I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, so I know you've been in education, and we had a. I I, I had to stop David before um, we were talking before we started recording the podcast. I'm like, you don't tell me this. You got to save it for the podcast because he's just sharing such good stuff. So uh, I've heard it before, but I, I could learn from him all day. It's, it's been great to have you. So David, thanks for being on the podcast. It's really great to sit down and chat with you. Absolutely, my pleasure. I I'm honored that that you would have asked me to do this. Well, you know, and we were talking about, and before we kind of get into the questions, we, you were talking about really kind of lifting up the profession and, and I get honest, honestly, David, when you, every time you send me an email, I'm like, oh yeah, this, this is what this guy does all the time. So like, I appreciate you always <laughs> you do. You uh, every time, well, right? yeah, Jill Seiler was one of my students, by the right. way, in, in my principal prep program. Oh, Jill. Yeah. Jill is wonderful. I'm going to give Jill a little preemptive little shout out from david yeah. there too i'm so, in her book i'm in her book yeah jill's a, jill's, a, jill's a good friend of mine and so uh she's a wonderful leader so david i got three questions for you and so uh you've been in education for a while you're retired now but like you're kind of like educator retired so like you like i don't know if any educator actually retires they always kind of you know still no. do work and i know you're mentoring a, a ton of uh, leaders right now uh, in education. So when you look back at your career and you think of all the teachers you connected with, whether as a colleague, uh, whether as a student, who do you think of as a teacher that really inspired you and why? Oh, gosh, George, that's a great question. And I'm, I'm flooding, you know, with with different teachers and, you know, and, and trying to figure out why, mm -hmm. because that's, that's what you, the key to this is why were they why are they still in your in my life after 40 years of being an educator right and uh, and i would say uh it has to do with with something really simple which is kindness mm -hmm. and and uh the the woman was my second grade teacher named may mrs straight and and uh uh, what I remember is is her is is my level of safety in the room, and and her her being consistently kind, and and um, and and emotionally uh, balanced, and 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 would 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 treat each of us as special, mm -hmm. and I. I, I want to be special. I want to be seen, you know, especially as a little second grader. I mm. walked to school. I, I went home and had a bologna sandwich and, and tomato soup at my house and then walked back to school after lunch. Right. <laughs> that, that's, that's how unsophisticated that, that all is, you know, but, but that she stands out. And I remember her, her, this is another kind of weird thing. Her, her husband was my dad's boss at, oh, Kelly wow. Air, at, at, at civil service at Kelly Air Force Base. <laughs> well, that's a small world. It's actually, and we're going to give a little shout out. That's, that's what we want. It, there, so when I was actually in grade four, and it's interesting because we, we remember so many of these things, you know, from, you know, when we were little kids, right? And kind of remember this. Uh, my teacher, her name was Miss Butler. It was her very first year of teaching, right? And you know, probably if you, if I was like, if I knew anything, she probably struggled in some areas, you know, as most teachers do at any year, especially in your first. But she made such a tremendous impact. It's something I always remind people that even those years you struggle, you're probably making a huge difference. And at the end of the year, um, she wrote individualized cards to every kid and talked about something that they did that really made a difference that really connected and she, and it just filled it. And <laughs> this is embarrassing. I love the Smurfs and she put it on a Smurf cutout. So it was like extra special because she knew something about me. She wrote about, you know, things that I did for the classroom. And what was really powerful is that uh, I thought about that, how much of a difference that made to me. And 
I actually did that for all the students that I taught when I was an elementary teacher. And I still connect with some of these kids who are, you know, grown ups now have their own families and they still talk about that card that I wrote them. And that was all because of uh, Miss Butler. I would, I actually didn't learn that in, you know, college. I didn't pick that up. No teacher I worked with ever shared that. It was actually something that my teacher did. So uh, I, I love that story. So yeah. I know you mentor, I know you mentor a lot of administrators um, to this day and have a significant impact and all over uh, North America. So you think of all the administrators that you work with, I know you did some principal development, um, you know, in, in the Austin area. When you think of like a really great leader, who's someone you actually think of and, 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 and why? Well, I'd have to say my boss from Region 13, uh, Eileen Reed is her name. And um, I remember she trusted me so much. She, I mean, I, I was almost like, are you sure? I mean, I was kind of like, I think you're giving me too much trust here. I mean, right, I, right. I, I'm doing the best I can, but, you know, but I'm human, you know, and, and, uh, but, but, but I'll, I'll tell you, I, it's interesting that you, you just asked me this question because I'll, I'll tell you what happened the first year I was at Region 13 in charge of the alternative principal preparation program. My, 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 I've never been anywhere out of the United States. And my husband came to me and said, he wasn't my husband then, he was my boyfriend then. And mm -hmm. he came to me and he said, uh, we have a chance to go to Greece. Do you want to go to Greece? And I'm like, what? And, and when? Well, it, it was during the summer when my first year, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's when I, I did professional development for administrators, right? right. So, so that's when they're off and that's when you can do it. And, and I remember, oh, I, I can't stay long. I've got, I, don't, I don't even know if I should ask because I just got here in October and he wants to go in, in June or July, you know. And so I remember going to Eileen Reed and I said, Eileen, I have this chance to go to Greece. And, and I said, I, don't, I know that I just got here and I know I'm new and I know this is a time for with training. And she said, go, you have to go, David. Mm. I will never forget that, you know, and, 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 and since, that's her kindness again coming through. But since that time, she's become a dear friend. But, but even as she moved up, she moved me up mm. with, you know, because she trusted me so much and because we worked together and she was the kind of boss that you could tell her anything and, and she'd listen. Now, if, if she wasn't, if she gave you something and, and David, I want you to do this, this, and this, and this, and you're like, okay, okay, okay. Right. Bye. You know, you don't want to take up too much time. Right. And, and I be, I go back to my desk and I go like, I don't quite understand what she wants me to do here. And I'd say, Eileen, can I have five minutes of your time? And she'd say, absolutely. Come on in. Or, or in 10 minutes I'll be through yeah. coming. And you go and you sit there for, for, for five minutes and you say, Give me a little better idea of your vision for what you want me to do. Boom. You got it? Thank you. I'm out of here. Go do it. I, that, I mean, this clarity of vision, right. this clarity of the mission, this, this uh, honesty and decency and, and, and all of those things like that that are hard to measure. But you, it's like you know them when you see them, right? You know them when right. you feel them from her. And we're still friends. And in fact, we're going to use her house at Angel Fire <laughs> in January. All right. Well, hey, Eileen, if you're listening, you got a little shout out from David. So I love that. You know, it's funny because when we were talking, um, we, we have very, we have a lot of similar experiences. And as we get to talk more, I, I see how, how connected we are. Uh, when I, I actually, the best mentor, the best leader I ever had, her name was Kelly Wilkins. I've talked about her 10 million times on this podcast. Uh, because she's made such a difference in me. And uh, I actually was, when I started working for her, I was taking a teaching job at her school because I was like, I, I, I need a job, but I don't know if I like this anymore. And I, like, I'm going to take this. I'll give it a year, see how this works, right? So I took the job and then I actually, um, I took the job and about a week later, I got an interview, a, an opportunity for an interview uh, for something that was still worth within education, but outside of the field and I was like how how can I you know take this interview when I just got hired and I'm not doing this behind her back because she gave me a job 
So I'm like, I got to call her, even though I don't want to call her and say like, Hey, I just accepted this job, but I'm going to take an interview. So I remember calling her and I said, Hey, I, I know this sounds weird. I know I just accept this job. I got an interview for something that could be my dream job. And I, I don't know if, I, if you don't want me to take it, I won't take it. I understand. Um, I don't want to lose this job because it's obviously not guaranteed for me. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I need a, I need a job next year. I don't want to lose a job because I took this interview, but I wanted to be open and front with you. And she said to me, she said, oh, you got to take the interview. You have to take the interview. If this is your dream job, then you'd be crazy. And I don't want you not taking the interview and then wondering if you should have the entire time. And, and here's Perfect. the beautiful thing. If you, if you get the job, we will get, we'll get somebody else. Somebody else will teach here. And if you take the interview and you don't get the job, we are blessed with a wonderful teacher. And wow. and I remember thinking like in that moment, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't even want that job. I want to work for this woman. Like she's amazing. Like why would I even want this job? This is like, do you know what I mean? And, and it was that moment where she just, you know, she wanted what was best, you know, she wanted what was best for me because it was weird because we were talking about this a little bit before she knew that if she did best by me, I would be the best for the school I possibly could. And probably like you, Eileen's asking to do stuff and Eileen treated you well. And then I, I'd be in the middle of doing stuff. I'm like, how did she talk me into doing this stuff? Like, why am I doing all this extra stuff? But I just be, because I just, she just made such a difference for me. So I just love that. And it's like, we, we both have uh, Eileen's in our uh, experience. So I love that. That's a and beautiful so, story. Absolutely. And so, yeah. So last question I have for you, David, you, you have uh, done a lot of different things. You've taught art, you've been counseling, you've worked in leadership development, a lot of great mentors, but if you can go back to your very first year teaching and think about you talking to David that first year, what advice would you give to yourself? <laughs> oh, that's a really interesting one because of my first uh, year experience. Um, the advice would be, be not afraid. I wasn't going to be afraid of any of this. Mm -hmm. I just decided I'm going to do my best. I mean, it's, it's almost the four agreements. If you've ever read those, you know, which yeah. is don't take anything personally, do your best, uh, be impeccable with your word. And I forget what the other one was. And those, those are good advice for human beings and first year mm -hmm. teachers. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, like I think every experience, you know, shapes us in different ways. And, uh, you know, as, as probably similar to, um, your experience, you've had great administrators who have helped shape you. You've had, you know, students who have helped shape you and just kind of, you know, em embrace those opportunities in, in front of us. Sometimes, uh, sometimes the best lessons that we have in life are, are the toughest ones. Right. And we, but it's, is our willingness to kind of grow and, uh, and, and just kind of looking at some of those opportunities. So it, it's really been great to connect with you and to, uh, to, to learn from you. I I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about, you know, your career and all the you know things you've done, but, uh, everyone make sure you connect with David. You can see kind of his, his, uh, bio information down below in the description. David, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Everyone, thank you. thank you for being here and listening today. I hope you have a wonderful day.